everyone, Paul from High Tech Legion, and we'll be taking a look at the 3D BIOS, which are dual UEFI BIOS for the Gigabyte G1 Assassin 2 motherboard. Right now we are in what I would like to call easy mode. Basically, as you can see, the different components of the motherboard are being highlighted on its own because I don't have a cursor over them. But what you could do is you could go over each specific item and it'll bring up different different tuning options for you to uh, for you to adjust. So if we were to click on the I.O. panel it basically shows you the rear panel and USB what your support is going to be. Clicking on the PCIe expansion slots we can see the slot configurations course PCI slot 1, slot 2, PCI. If we click over the heatsink on the PCH, we can go into the BIOS, which is the number lock state, full screen logo, virtualization technology, Intel VTRD, and of course the smart fan controls. we click over the heatsink we go into the 3D power mode of course this is all digital power now it is not an analog power it is a uh, digital VRM and we can change our phase controls etc our voltages currents and thermals drive controllers if you click over the the SATA ports, brings up your ATA controller. You can change it between ACHI, IDE RAID, or disable it. Your GSATA controller, which is your extra controller for uh, expansion of your SATA ports. And of course, your system tuning frequency, memory timings for both banks A, B, C, and D, and of course, of course your voltage settings for your CPU V core DRAM voltage. Under frequency of course you have your base clock, your CPU frequency, XMP profiles, memory multiplier, and memory frequencies. If we go ahead and click on the 3D BIOS icon, it actually gives you what your computer is at, uh, set to at this present time, what your base clock is, and what the uh, frequency of your memory is. You could also change the direction of which uh, the 3D interface is facing. If we click back up here, it brings up the 3D BIOS logo again. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll go into the advanced mode, click on MIT, and the MIT is going to give you different settings. Of course, the, the main screen is going to show you what BIOS base clock, your CPU frequency, memory frequency, how much memory you have in there, your CPU temperature, your vCore voltages, and DRAM voltages. If you click on MIT current status, it's going to show you what the current status of all your cores are, what the turbo frequencies are running at, what your non-turbo frequencies are running at, core temperatures, your dims, how, what you have populated, and what your timings are. If we go back, we could go into the advanced frequency settings, which gives you a base clock control. You could set that to manual. It'll, it'll allow you to then adjust your host clock frequency, your base clock gear ratio, base clock PCIe clock evaluation, CPU clock ratio, CPU frequency, and advanced CPU core frequencies. Your advanced CPU core frequencies, of course, is this is where you could change your CPU clock ratio, your CPU, which will change your CPU frequency, of course. You could change your PLL over voltage and all your turbo timings and shut off your C states. 
If you want to set an extreme memory profile, click on extreme memory profiles and it will give you an option to uh, change your memory profiles. You could also change your mul multiplier manually. Advanced memory settings, that gives you your memory settings. It'll give you your XMPs, your multiplier, performance enhance, DRAM timings, and you could also adjust each of your of your channels individually. Advanced voltage settings gives you your 3D power control. This is where you change your phase controls. You could uh, add low line calibration settings to track. You could you could uh, set low line calibrations for your internal memory controller. You have V-Core protection here. IMC current protection, these all could be changed at this time they're all on auto. CPU core voltage, this is where you can change your CPU V core voltage, your PLL and VTT as well as the IMC. DRAM voltage control gives you the option to change your voltages on each channel and chipset voltage control. PCH core and PCH. PC health status, of course, that's going to show you what your system is running at, what voltages you're running at, what your 5 volt rails, 12 volt rails are at. CPU temperatures, the fan speeds, and of course, if we scroll down here, it'll give you all your fan speed warnings etc. Going back, miscellaneous settings, there are none at this time. So we'll go back and now we'll go into the system control. This gives you your system information, of course CPU name, frequencies, etc. It's a little re bit redundant, but it is there just so you can take a look at it. This is where you can set your system date and system time. It also gives you your ATA port configurations. What do you have populated? Going to the BIOS features, this is where we can set our boot options. What do we want to boot first? What we want to boot second, etc. It gives you your CD, DVD, ROM properties, hard drive, BBS properties, full logo, show it, don't show it. Basically, you could change your settings in here for your PCIe status, your virtualization technology. Next, we would go to our peripherals, and this gives us our settings for our peripherals. USB 2.0 devices, SATA controller mode, USB legacy USB support, USB 3.0 support, XHCI handoff, EHCI handoff, port emulation, <laughs> sorry, and the Marvel Marvel ATA controller configuration, which would be your GSATA controller. Under power management, we have our different settings for our sleep states and soft off, etc. And then of course we have a save and exit button icon. And that'll give you your options to on um, what you would like to do. You could load profiles in here for overclocking, you could save profiles, load your optimized defaults, etc. By hitting F1, we could go back into the 3D mode. And it brings us back into easy mode. I've found that unless I really want to tweak a lot of things, the 3D mode for this BIOS works fine. It gives me all the options that I, I tend to need at times. So you could basically tune your tune your system right from 3D mode. 
This has been our quick overview of the 3D dual UEFI BIOS from Gigabyte for the G1 Assassin II motherboard. For the full review, visit www.hitechlegion.com. Thank you for watching. Stay thirsty, my friends. See you next time.